Aloha. So now that we have built six of these Schwinn Meridian electric trike conversion kits, I thought it would be a good idea to make a video sharing some of the things that we've learned along the way. So let's talk about lessons learned, some installation tips. I'd also like to cover some of the accessories that we found that we think are excellent that help to make these bikes even better. And then finally, let's talk about range and power. So these are both 1000 watt and 1500 watt bikes. They're all being overvolted with 52 volt batteries. So a lot to talk about there. Let's go ahead and get started. So after brakes and tires, one of the safety things that I like to keep in mind when designing and building an e-bike is what type of throttle I'm gonna use. The thumb throttles that come with the commercially available ones can get a bit tiring in the long-term rides. So here on this bike, you can see the full throttle where the entire handle grip there turns just like a moped or a motorcycle. On this one is the half throttle, where just half of that grip turns. And I think these are safer and easier to use on a regular basis. The reason is, if you're working on it and you happen to leave it on, or if you stopped and you're leaning over, if you rest your hand on the end of the grip here, you're not going to accidentally activate the throttle. So you've got a lot more control over when it's going to happen, less opportunity for mistake. On this one, if you happen to hit it, you're activating the throttle. And I did that one time. The tire accidentally rubbed all the meat off of my leg there, and it hurt. It took a little while to heal. So I would definitely recommend the half throttle for safety and convenience. Okay, lesson learned. So when you're assembling these bikes, one of the first things that I'll do is put the wheel on. So you remove the old wheel, and then you put the new wheel in, and you've got all these little nuts and washers and everything in there that you've got to assemble. And as you're doing the assembly, you want to make sure that the wheel is lined up properly and all that kind of good stuff. And so there's dry fit and final fit. Well, one lesson learned is, before you go take a ride on the bike, after you got all the other stuff assembled, you got the motor control and the battery and all that good stuff in there, make sure you go back and tighten up these nuts, these nuts as tight as possible. You want to make sure that they were not at a dry fit tightness. You want them to be at final tightness before you go take a ride. Otherwise, you can rip right through everything. So make sure that not only the axle bolts are tight, but also the bolts for your torque arms. So there you go, installation tip. Okay, lesson learned, no light kits on the wheels. So these nice little light kits are a lot of fun to use and can even have a advantage when it comes to safety riding at night. However, in the long run, I would not recommend that you put them on the wheels. And by the time that you invest quite a bit of money in your electric bike, it's more than a toy, it becomes a tool, and you don't want to ruin the darn thing in the first six months of riding it or whatnot. So one of the problems is if you put an electric bike kit on there, it's going to be a little bit wobbly. There's always going to be the little component that's a little bit off center. And over time, it's going to put a little bit of extra stress and fatigue on, uh, on the wheel itself. And then, you know, it can be kind of a problem. So what I would recommend is that you use these light kits to go on the trunk of the bicycle and also on the basket itself. Okay, what I like to do is use a red light on the basket and then some kind of another colored light on the trunk of the bicycle itself. And in this case, I actually have color changing lights. Additionally, I have found that this Wheelbrights brand is much better. This one uses three AAA batteries versus this other brands that have these thin little wires with a little LED light on them. This Wheelbrights brand has that same wire inside of a plastic tube and uses three AA batteries instead of one AAA battery. And these lights are much brighter. I've got them here on the baskets, okay? And then also on the trunk of the bicycle. So I don't have headlamps or headlights on these bicycles yet. That's the next thing that I'm gonna be ordering. And those will sit right here on the front of the bike and then plug into the battery so you don't have to charge them separately. But right now I don't have those. We're using a headlamp when we ride the bicycle as well as the trunk lights and also the basket lights. So for the basket lights, we're using red because most people associate that with a tail light. And then you can do whatever color that you want to have in the middle trunk. This one happens to be color changing, but I've done blue and other colors. So lesson learned, put the lights on your bike, but not on the wheels. Installation tip, centering the LCD display. So with all of these bikes, you get a nice little computer display. And of course, when you turn it on, this gives you all kinds of wonderful information that you need for your ride. And of course it didn't work because I had the battery unplugged right now. <laughs> With this display, it's much better to have it in the middle of the bike. And one of the problems that I found is the little screws that go into here are not long enough because 
the handlebar bulges out a little bit right here. So it's just a little bit too big to get these, these little uh, grips around it. So what I did is I used zip ties through there to hold that together. Now on this bike, this is not done properly. Well, it works fine, but it's, it's better the other way. With a, with a display over here, I can go ahead and just use the screws and not have to use zip ties to hold that in. The problem is when you're riding down the road and you just want to take a quick glance at your display information, this is not a very convenient location. It really is much more comfortable over time to have it right here in the middle of the bike. So with this particular installation, I'm gonna to need to redo that before I can call this one done. Okay, installation tip. So the way these box, uh, bikes ship from the factory, the front brake is on the left side. So when you press the left handlebar, the front brake activates, okay? The problem with that is when you're driving down the road, you wanna use your left hand for making hand signals. Turn left, turn right, stop, that kind of a thing. And that's kind of hard to do when you also want to use your hand for coming to a stop. So what we've learned to do with these installs is to actually switch that around. So if we come over here to this blue bike, which has been installed properly, if you press this brake over here, the left brake, okay, no longer activates the front. Now, you press the right brake, and you can see it activating that front brake. So now when you're coming down the road, you can go ahead and use your brake while you're making hand signal turns. So that's why we go ahead and switch the brakes. Now, the cables as they ship are designed to naturally and beautifully cross over each other in the front. So that gets a little bit awkward when you switch them. So what I do is I'll put one little zip tie right here. It looks a little goofy, but I'll tell you what, I'd rather be able to come to a full stop. And yes, it still works with the shoe and the boot and all that stuff down there. So install tip, go ahead and switch those brake cables from left to right and you'll be a lot happier and safer. Okay, so on this installation tip, we're gonna talk about routing the cables and tying them all together to make them nice and neat and tidy. So the first steps of the installation, you put in your hand grips and the brake levers, and that gives you some cables that you've gotta run. There's an extra sensor cable here coming from the brick and this tells the motor controller to kill the battery, or sorry, to kill the motor whenever you press the brakes. So very important to have the uh, motor cut off when you press the brakes and that's what that wire does. So as you can see, I'm using little zip ties to just keep them nice and tight and close to the bar. This is the on off switch here and also uh, display controller so you can go through the different modes. I'm using the little mini zip ties here to keep the cables nice and tight to the handlebar while allowing the brake cable to sit free, okay? You can see the Delco straps for the little handlebar bag that's here. You can see the little straps for the LCD control display panel here. But all the wires are wired tight up to the handlebar then I bring them together right down in front here. Again, keeping them tight. This little zip tie here is loose, yet holds everything together. You don't want to constrict things, but you want to hold them in shape. So keep the wires tight. Now bring them all down. So again, the wires that are up here, they're the same thing. They all come down, they all meet in the middle here. They come down to the side, zip tied together, tied into the frame over here so that they don't sag. And then right in here is where I start wrapping it with this really nice cable wrap that comes with the kits. And so that cable wrap goes all the way down. And then I've got a big bunch of cables over here, which before it gets wrapped up, that's what the cables look like. So I take that whole mess and then we wrap those up a little bit. And then it looks a little bit cleaner like that. Okay. Then the cables from there go into the controller and then down there and into the battery. And so that cable, we're literally able just to wrap right there through the basket it all in. So that gives you a pretty nice clean install. The cables are all tucked right to the frame. Everything's out of the way and you can turn the handlebars left and right without the cables bunching up anywhere. So after all these bikes, that is the best way to run the cables that I found. Installation tip. Use a little bit of oil to protect your metal parts. So here you can see on the fender a couple of screws. I bought this bike used and was already slightly rusty but I dabbed a little bit of penetrating protective oil on there and then wiped the excess off. Over here you can see on this bike, no oil has been put on the parts and they are left free to rust and continue to corrode. So even if they're rusty, a little bit of protective oil on there is gonna help to preserve the lifetime of the bike. Also, you can put that on the little metal racks in the tray that it comes with and um, you can do that to different parts of the bike. These little rods that slide up and down, these little hinges, some of these parts tend to rust out. So putting a little protective oil on those 
can help the bike to last a little bit longer. Installation tip. In this tip, I wanna show you how important it is to switch the brakes from left to right. So the default way that these twin bikes are installed is that the brakes are right over here on the left side. Depressing this left brake activates the front brake and that's where most of your braking power is gonna come from. The problem with this is, is that if you're trying to make a turn and you're driving in the road, you need to use that left hand for making road signals like turn left or turn right, etc. And that's hard to do when you're also trying to come to a stop at the same time. So even though this makes the cables a little bit cattywhopper, we've learned to go ahead and swap the controls. So in this case, you've got the front brake over here on the left side. Uh, excuse me, the front, <laughs> other way around. We got the front brake over here on the left side because that's actually on the right side. As you're sitting on the bike, this is on the right side. So now you can sit on the bike, press the brakes, press the brakes and then okay. okay installation tip installing the battery in the back of the basket so i like to put the battery right here in the basket because it gives me a little bit of room to slide documents and other things it creates a little bit of a space here and then it leaves the majority of the basket open for putting luggage and groceries and other things like that in this particular case the battery carriage this is the little track that the battery sits down on and then slides into you can see the actual connecting points over here that make the electrical connection this particular one I was able to install directly into the metal brackets that are here. So we drilled holes and then we put screws and bolts that are through. For the majority of these, we use a mounting board to sandwich between the, the battery a carriage here and the basket. Here you can see one of these boards we're using and we're sandwiching this with the controller to here. So literally the controller just screws into the board and we do the same thing for most of the installations here on the batteries. So if you come over here, you can see this is a black board. This is a piece of wood that I painted black. We removed the four bolts and popped the basket off, put this piece of wood down here, screwed the basket deck down on. Then you put the carriage in and you screw in one, two, and three bolts. And these are screwing directly into the wood. So it's just sandwiching it to the basket. So um, taking, taking the basket off to get that piece of wood in is a lot better than trying to finagle it up and under much better to take the basket off and I make this piece of wood about the size of the battery slightly larger and then the same thing for the motor controller that you see sandwiched over here so let's take a look at that as well and there you can see the motor controller and I just use a couple of screws here and there to go directly into the wood and we're sandwiching it in so again these are just pieces of plywood that I painted black on all sides trying to give them as much weather resistance as can even though I don't drive these in the weather so there you go installation tip Installation tip, tuning the fenders and such. A lot of these parts are simply flimsy aluminum and can be bent a little bit this way and that way. So for example, with this bike here, when I bring it into the garage, sometimes this little fender on the side will rub against the wall or something, and that will just push the little fender components over a little bit, and then you can see the, the edge of the tire peeking out a little bit there. So sometimes you just gotta come in and kind of take things and shove them a little bit this way or a little bit that way. These are cheap aluminum parts. These are ultimately cheap aluminum bikes. So a little bit of hand tuning here and there will go a long ways. Okay, so uh, another preferred accessory that we like to have for these trikes, one of the value of riding a trike compared to a two-wheeler is that this is also a cargo bicycle. So because it's a cargo bicycle, you can haul a lot of stuff and that just makes it so much more useful. Um, and when you're hauling all this different stuff, there's a lot of items that you wanna be able to secure to the vehicle. And one of those items might be like a bottle or a jug of some kind. Maybe you got a water bottle, maybe you've got some other groceries or things. So these bungee cords are very helpful. I like to keep a couple of big ones here and then I also like to keep these little guys and what's really nice about these little guys is they are good for strapping in so many different types of little things in this case I've got this jug of cleaning fluid here and it ain't going anywhere if I wanted to secure it even more I could bring one of these guys through the strap like this hook it onto the basket somewhere bring it back through just crazy anywhere you plug it in now she ain't going anywhere and I can go over bumps everywhere so bungee cords are fantastic the basket set up so it makes it really easy to strap a couple on the back and make sure you get a couple of big ones as well as a couple of these little tiny ones and then you can bring just about anything home and make sure that it arrives safely 
So next uh, preferred accessory that we like to talk about are uh, upgraded tires or replacement tires for the bike. So this is the stock tire that comes with the bicycles and you can see the little wiggly tread that's in here as well as the lines that go down. And um, these are a pretty good road tire. Um, these are again the stock tires that come with them and you can order these aftermarket. If we come all the way down here, you can see we even have a pair of white wall versions of these tires. So this is this is a replacement tire that we bought online and these are white wall versions of that standard Schwinn tire. So um, if you're not used to a road tire, it's, a, it's not a huge amount of tread compared to like a mountain bike tire because these are designed for smoother running, more efficient use of power, etc. So this is for smooth surfaces, not for off-roading. However, once you've worn these stock tires out, you can upgrade to something that's a little bit a little bit more meat or tread depending on your sign. This is still a road tire. This is a bell tire. These are 26 inch bikes. This is their flat defense tire. Uh, they call it their comfort tire, but it's got a little bit more meat on it compared to the road tires that come stock. Here you can see it on the bike here. And so these have been driven maybe about 20 miles or something with these tires on here. You can still see the little rubber tags on the side. These tires are, in my experience, just as smooth as the stock tire. So even though they got a little more tread, they still run as smooth as the stock tire. These feel so much more competent on the road. When I go over a slippery or a smooth surface, I feel like I'm gripping a lot better. So in my opinion, these are, you don't lose any power or any uh, distance or range or anything like that for them being a little bit meatier tire than the stock tire. And again, they're a lot more competent on the road. So at your earliest convenience, go ahead and upgrade those tires and you won't regret it. Okay, so uh, next on the list of favorite accessories would be one of the more important uh, safety accessories, and that's a bell. So what is a bell useful for? Well, when you're coming down a pathway, there are other people in the world, and not only is it safe and best practices, but it's also polite and nice to let people know that you're coming. A lot of times folks will use the entire bike path when they think they're alone and just walk more casually. Um, so it's nice to give them a little, a little ringy dingy as you pass by. These are one of the more commonly available um, little bells that you see available on Amazon or elsewhere and I found uh, these guys here although this one this one's kind of working I found these ones to be so cheaply built that about three quarters of the ones that I order don't actually work um, so these ones I would not recommend a simple screw goes in I don't happen to have this one attached right now I just put it here for demonstration purposes but there you can see it's sticking already but that sound is the sound that most people are trained for. An electronic sound or some other type of beeping noise is not what people are used to. They like that old classic sound. They'll turn with a smile versus turning with a concerned look. Now there's another cheaper version of that. And this one also just attaches simply to the little handlebar here. It's got a simple little thumb uh, striker and a little ding. Okay. People will notice this one, it's functional. You gotta hit it each time. Um, people will turn and look with a little bit of a startled look with this one. They don't necessarily expect to see something vintage. If they hear that vintage ring, then of course they, um, they'll have a little bit more of a smile and that's what I've noticed. So this is functional. People can hear you coming. You gotta get your own little rhythm going on there. Now let's talk about our favorite one. So A, it's good to have a bell. Any kind of bell is better than no bell, but let's come over here. So this is our preferred accessory. So this is a classic bell. This is uh, all stainless steel, and um, it does have a nice little thumb striker here, and listen to this sound. So one pull of the lever, and this whole little thing spins here, and gives you a really nice classic sound. It's almost like the ice cream trucks in the neighborhood, right? So I can tell you from experience on our local bike path that has people from all over the world on it, that when I ring this sound, versus one of these little, you know, compared to a, when they hear this sound, they'll turn with an unexpected kind of alarmed look. When they hear that ring, they'll turn with a smile on their face like the ice cream truck is there. So this is what I recommend. It's a much bigger, more substantial bell. It's not gonna break down right away. These little guys here can be a waste of money. This one, not so fragile, but the sound isn't like, you know, it's loud, they can hear it, but it's not classic. This one does give you a little bit more of that classic sound, but I found this mechanism is just so crappy. It is just such low quality that it's not very long at all before it just no longer works. And this one is actually breaking right here in my hand. So there you go. This one is no longer functional. That in fact no longer works. This one will work till the cows come home. So invest a little bit extra for a classic bell. These are available on Amazon and we'll put the link right here below. So next preferred accessory that we're gonna talk about are these handlebar bags. 
And essentially what this is, is a fanny pack for your bicycle. Now these are designed with a little reflector on the front. They are designed to sit forward on the, on the bikes. Uh, one of the things that we've learned is when you do that, you can no longer put the reflector on here. So there's a little reflector that comes with these bikes and it's safe to have a little reflector that points forward. When you put the bag here, there's no room for a reflector or for a headlight that we're gonna be getting and adding to these bikes. So in addition to that, having this handlebar bag face towards you allows much easier access. You can go ahead and zip it right open, reach in, grab anything that you need. It's face towards you. You don't have to get off the bike and come forward to get stuff. So that's really nice. In addition to that, this little cell phone pouch here right in the front, when you put your phone in, it's now pointed right at you and at the proper angle. So if you want to use your phone while you're driving for maps or whatever else it is, it's right there for you. So we'd recommend getting one of these nice little handlebar bags. There's a number of different designs. This one is about the right size and is nice and insulated. The quality is good. We'll put a link down below for this one. I believe we ordered it off of Amazon. It does have little pouches on either side, room for maybe a little mask or something if you want to put in there. And then it's got plenty of room inside. So as you can see, there is the little gooseneck here for the handlebar and that does kind of dig into the bag a little bit, but because of the size of the bag, there's still plenty of room to put lots of stuff in there. And these are insulated little cooler bags so you can have a beverage or a snack or something and know that that's going to help to maintain temperature as well. So there you go. Get yourself a nice handlebar bag. We like them uh, pointed forward, but this is a very handy accessory. Okay, so um, let's talk about our favorite accessories. Seats. This is the default seat that comes with the Schwinn Meridian Adult Tricycles. And it's okay, although after a little while of riding it, which when you electrify a bicycle, you're not just riding this for a few minutes, you might ride it for an hour or a couple hours. And so at that point, these little things start to make a bigger difference, the quality of your brakes and that kind of thing. So your tush is really uh, gonna be happy with a much better seat. So the next level up from here is gonna be a higher quality seat of the same dimension. And that's what we have over here in the Barkaroo seat. So taking a look at the uh, Bikeroo seat rather, um, it's a very nice comfortable seat. It's got a lot more squish. It is roughly the same dimensions as the default seat, but this one is definitely more comfortable. Now to upgrade from here, we need something a little bit uh, wider, something that's a little bit larger for bigger people. And that's really what we're talking about here, isn't it? So this is the uh, Schwinn Cruiser. And this is a little bit wider. Um, it's got a nice uh, kind of a little dip area here. So it gives you, it feels like you're kind of gripping it a little bit, if you will. Um, I found this to be pretty nice. Still gives you a little bit of seat fatigue after an hour or so of driving, but um, I mean, that may be uh, just part of the ride. This is the uh, Schwinn Cruiser Plus. So this is the next level up. It's a little bit wider than the Schwinn Cruiser and it's got a little bit more cushioning in it. So I found of uh, a lot of the seats that are out there, this so far is the most comfortable one that we've used. Now there is this other seat and I don't have a whole lot of experience with it. So this one here is the Ling Mai seat and it's even a uh, little bit wider than this Schwinn Cruiser. It's got kind of a, I call it the butterfly design. It's a little bit curved and these are not as rigid as I would like them on the side. So it feels a little squishy. I need to spend a little bit more time with this seat before I can really comment on it, but it's uh, definitely not cheap. This one is almost $40. So, um, so there you go, seats. There's lots of ways to upgrade your ride. Starting with a good seat is a good place to start. Okay, preferred accessory, upgraded brake pads. So these are the stock brake uh, shoe size or brake pad size that comes with the Schwinn bikes. And let's compare that to the ones that I've already installed that are a little bit bigger. So if you come in tight with the view here, you can really see the difference. And let's do it this way. So this is the brand that I've been using. These are Kevlar reinforced brake pads and they come left and right and they're easy to install and change. It's one of the simplest things to do. There's videos online that you can pull up very easily that show how to do this. But if you take a look at the original size compared to the expanded size, the expanded size is what, 50% bigger? Yeah. It's like 50% bigger. And I'll tell you what, this makes a difference because what goes fast must come to a stop. And with all the power that we're given to these bikes, these upgraded brake pads make a huge difference. The rear brake that's on these bikes, this is a little drum brake. This is the rear brake for all these Schwinn bikes right back here, this little area. And that thing does not have that much power at all. Maybe five to 10% of the total braking power for the bike is on that rear brake. So this is everything up here. 
So again, upgraded brake pads. What goes fast must come to a stop. This Happleby brand even comes with a little Allen wrench, which by the way is the perfect size for adjusting your brakes. So if you buy these brakes, stick this wrench in your handlebar bag and you will always have a brake adjusting wrench with you. So this Happleby brand, I'm sure there's others that are good as well, but get those bigger brake pads. These ones are Kevlar reinforced, so they do last longer and I can attest to the fact that they definitely do. So um, upgrade your brake pads. You won't regret it and your life depends on it. Okay, right. lessons learned, how much speed is necessary. So today, we've got our handsome subject on a 1500 watt bike. We also have the same color bike in a thousand watts. Now we're running both of these bikes over volted at 52 volt batteries. So that's giving us a little more extra wattage anyways. This bike at peak hits about 2000 watts. Whereas this other blue one that's got a thousand watt motor, that one at peak hits about 1300 watts. And uh, honestly, they're both quite fast. What we've learned over time is that you don't need a 1500 watt motor. The 1000 watt motor over volted with a 52 volt battery does a great job. And so here you can see the motor on the front wheel. These look exactly the same as a 1000 watt motor does. There's no real outward difference on it. The difference is, of course, the winding on the inside of the motor. And then also here you can see this is a 52 volt motor and it's running at this one is a 52 volt 19.2 amp hour battery so this one's got a lot of power and a lot of range and we found that combination to be pretty nice so 1500 watt versus a thousand watt battery so a thousand watt motor versus a 1500 watt motor what we've learned is that the 1000 watt motor is a bit more measured in the way that it uses speed. Sometimes the 1500 watt motor is just a little too much. It'll peel out when you don't want it to. It'll slip on grass. It's definitely fun to have the extra power, but day in and day out, the 1000 watt is plenty fast and it's just a lot uh, safer and easier to use in some ways. One of the nice things about riding these trikes is that you can let your guard down and you don't have to be as on about everything. You can kind of forget things a little bit and sometimes the extra power is almost gets in the way. So um, anyways, let's go. What, do you have any, um, anything that you'd like to say about the power? Yeah, the uh, 1000 watt is actually, because it's uh, sometimes peels the 1500 watt, the 1000 watt is actually much more comfortable to ride because you're not constantly worrying about how far you pull the throttle. It's much easier to just, on a thousand watt, pull it all the way, you're gonna not run into any problems. With this throttle, you pull it all the way, <laughs> you better buckle up. <laughs> That's right, Buttercup, you better buckle up. Well, show us, give her a little goose. So this is going on a slight incline, maybe about a 3% grade going up here. And um, just got regular stock tires, road's not wet, it's in good condition. So go ahead and give it a gun. You can see the tire slipped and peeled a little bit there and off he goes. And of course with these tricycles, it's a three-wheeled bicycle. So you lean and the bike does not. So plenty of speed. Jason's a little over six foot tall, probably a good 190, almost 200 pounds. And this bike gets up and goes. So that's 1500 watts. Again, going up about a 3% grade. He's got plenty of power. And you can ride for miles on this without pedaling. Plenty of battery range. So 1500 watts is okay. Definitely gotta be a little bit of a thrill seeker to wanna run that, but 1000 watts is plenty fine. Okay, now we're gonna show you what 1000 watts looks like. And he's off. As you can see, the 1000 watt does have much more graceful acceleration. The 1500 watt does have a tendency to peel out on any kind of gravel or loose surface. And with the 1000 watt, you still got plenty of power and like we said, a much more graceful ride. But as you can see, the 1000 watt motor's got plenty of power. So really there's no need for the 1500 watt. Happy cycling, aloha.